Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another exciting episode of All About You. In today's segment, we will be going over the Frieza deck. Now, I know I did a video prior to showcasing what Bandai had in store for us in terms of how they want us to play the deck. However, in this video, I'm going to show you how I play the deck. And what's good about it is, is that like many others have said in other channels, you could play the deck as a red-blue variant or a red-yellow variant. So far, those are the most successful combinations as of yet. However, you're going to see my twist of things and how I play my variant a little different from a lot of other deck profiles that you have seen. And I've had a lot of success with it. So far, through testing, it's been great. Now, before I start this video, I want all of you guys to list in the comment section below what topics do you want me to discuss as far as Dragon Ball Super the card game and as far as life related topics because this channel will have other features in it where we will be talking about real life related things you know whether it's relationships whether it's job career things that you have in mind that you want to do in life or you're afraid of doing life just a multitude of different topics so whatever you're interested in talking about list your comment below so I can see you know, and we can have a collective chat of different ideas to help one another. But without further ado, let's begin. All right, guys. So we have our Frieza leader. As you guys can see, during your main step, you can take a life. In that case, look at the top two cards of your deck and select a Frieza, red Frieza army card and add it to your hand. And then, of course, when you have four or less life, you can awaken. And by doing so, you restand one of your energies and you draw a card then bam we flip into pretty much the reason why we're playing the deck so for one when you attack you draw a card now during your active main step you can choose one of your red freezer battle cards and ko it in that case you can discard one card from hand and this card gains 5k for this turn and during your opponent's turn so for two turns he becomes a 20k leader which is amazing we run Four Frieza Overture of Battle. Now this bad boy, as you know, he has Swap 2, which is free. You can swap for one red Frieza card with energy cost of 2. And you swap it from your hand onto the board. Now what's great about this guy is his auto. When he comes into play, he can give any battle card or leader card 5k. When you play him, you give, let's say, your leader 5k. Then you swap him for the 2-drop Frieza, which is evolutionary process Frieza and now your leader has its buff now you have a 15k attacker that costs only one energy really strong and then he also has swap but it costs one so be careful because if you're doing it as early as turn one you don't want to attack knowing that your opponent can attack this card back because its downside is its permanent effect it becomes a 10k battle card its attack is reduced by 5k now we have Freezer Storm of Blows. Now this guy is probably the most interesting chain of Freezer. For one, he has Barrier. Then he has Swap 2. Two reds. Now you can swap for Freezer of 5 cost instead. When he comes into play, you can select one of your opponent's battle cards with 20k power or less and KO it. That's very strong. So he easily comes out to wipe out a battle card for technically two costs because when you go through the chain you're going through one you pay one energy he's free so you don't count him and then in order to go from here to here you have to pay one more energy so when you have two energy in one turn you can consecutively go through the chain and you can pop one of your opponent's battle cards and he has barrier so if you want you can leave him in active mode and not have to worry about your opponent getting rid of him unless they have cards that can attack active mode battle cards Last but not least, we have Final Showdown Frieza. So, this guy is the reason why we're pretty much playing the deck. For one, he has Double Strike, Critical. That's very rare that you have multiple of those characteristics in one card. And then look at this. The art is just amazing, you know? So Bandai stepped up their game even in the art field. But... The main reason why we're actually playing him is because of his auto. So once per turn, when your opponent plays a battle card, you can. It has counter timing, which is amazing. So the moment they're going to play a battle card, you can crit one of your life. In that case, 
you negate the card being put into play. It's a built-in code bloodlust for the cost of a life, which is very strong because you can get this guy out. Most of the times you can play this guy before you go down to four life. So you'll be at five life, your opponent plays a threat, you already have him on board, you can create your life, go to a perfect four life, and stop whatever your opponent's going to play, which is extremely powerful. We run four Zarbon Hidden Potential. So this guy, he is one of the key pieces to the deck. For one, when he is KO'd, this is when his abilities take place. You draw one card, and you can select one of your opponent's battle cards and reduce its attack by 15k. So you reduce its overall power by that amount, which is very, very strong because in conjunction with other cards we have, we can use cards like Captain Genyu. Body change. So if we reduce their cost by 15k, this gives us access to being able to use our body change Genyu to be able to take their higher cost cards. Example, you KO this card with your leader's effect while you're awakened, you draw your card, you're filtering, and you reduce their, their power. Now you play your body change Ginyu. You can now take anything that's 35K or less and take control of it because if you use his effect, now they become 20K if they were a 35K battle card. Not only this, but when Captain Genyu comes into play, he gives all your Genyu cards plus 10K, including himself. So when he comes into play, he's a 25K beat stick. Then during your active main step, you can, after you're done attacking or doing whatever you have to do with him, you can pop him off the board he goes into your drop zone, then you move him into your opponent's field, then you select one of your opponent's battle cards with 20k or less, and move it to your side of the board. And what's great is, if that, they were in rest mode, you can turn them into active mode, which is very powerful. Moving forward, we run our Strike Force Jace. Essentially, all he is is our super combo that you can use while you have five life or less. When you have five or less life, this card gains plus 10k and draws a card. Pretty simple, and it also can be used with Freeze's effect if need be. Now, moving on to our utility cards for the deck. Three, Shenron, Figure of Majesty. When you have five or more cards in your drop area, this is when you can use his sparking effect. So for one, you draw a card. Then you select one of the above. However, you cannot see the card. So a lot of you guys make sure that when you draw your card, you don't look at the card. So you just you could draw it if you want. Technically, you draw it, you, you put it aside, and then you select one of the abilities. Or you can just talk to your opponent and say, hey, I'm going to select whatever ability before the hand before you draw your card. So that it's common knowledge of what you're going to do. So you can either... Select one of your battle cards uh, with an energy cost of two or less from your drop zone and put it in play, which is very good because you can select your Jace, you can select your Zarbon, which is one of the most important cards of the deck, so you can keep reusing his effect, or you can select one of the pieces. You can select him or him based off of what you have in hand. Your next ability, you can also select up to two of your energy and put it into active mode, and then one of the last abilities you can use is give one of your battle cards 5k plus crit. So that means everybody in your deck could have critical, which is very strong. Now, moving on to our extra cards. Starting off, we have two planet M2. Now this is a field card. When this card is placed in the battle area, if your leader card is Dr. Miyu, you would draw one card. What's great about this is during your active battle step, you can select one of your opponent's cards, whether it's their leader or battle cards, and reduce its combat by 5k. So you're going to reduce its overall power by 5k, which is very strong for that battle step. What's great is, is that if they, you selected a battle card that originally had 5k, you can kill it off, which is one of the per perks of Planet M2. Moving forward, we run... For after image technique. Now, after image is a counter attack. It's not a negate. However, what it does is, if your leader card is red, you can choose one of your cards and give it 40k, which is strong. 
and you can select one of your opponent's cards and minus it 10k which is great because you can also kill battle cards by using this card now it's permanent sparking effect if you have five cards in your drop zone you can use it for free by adding a card from your life area to your hand which means that you can now gain advantage by gaining a card into your hand while still being able to hit your opponent's card by 10k and giving you a buff by 40k. Our next actual negate is Paralysis Technique. One of my favorites. For one, it just costs one red. You negate the attack of your opponent's card, then you can select all your opponent's battle cards and leader card and reduce their power by 5k. This is extremely strong considering that we are playing a Red Frieza Army Leader. It can literally screw up your opponent's sequencing if they don't know what this card does in advance. So they have to be careful on how they attack you because if they start laying down small cards such as Yajirobis or little guys like Kamis or Dendes, you can freely blow them up. Our blue package, we run four Whis Coercions, pretty standard. All you do is negate the attack and restand one of your energy. And then we run our four Sensu Beans, which essentially just untaps energy and gives any card of ours a 5k buff for the turn. It's great when you're using it on your leader. Our leader's effect can give itself a 5k buff. Then you use Sensu Bean, now your leader's 25k for the duration of your opponent's turn. That's extremely high, which is why we're playing this deck in this fashion. It's pretty nasty when you could do that to your opponent. And then last but not least, we are running a wild card. This would be the secret rare. Unfortunately, I do not own it at the moment in time, but I've been testing with it. That's another reason why I haven't been able to bring this deck to a locals. I don't have all the cards to it for it. But the secret rare is very interesting. First of all, it can only really be optimized if your life is at two or less. If it is, you reduce the cost by three, so he becomes a five cost battle card. Now, when he comes into play, all hell breaks loose. You target your opponent's board. You can remove all battle cards on your opponent's side of the board, 40k or less, ignoring barrier, which is already a huge plus. Its secondary ability is, is that when it comes into play, you look at your opponent's hand and select any one card. It could be an extra card, a battle card, anything, and you can discard it. That's ridiculous. So he's able to see your opponent's hand, see knowledge, and then he wipes out your opponent's board. And then if it didn't get any worse than that, he has quadruple strike, guys. Quad strike. That's insane. So... This is the card I've been testing. However, if you don't own the card, you can substitute it with another Planet M2 to make the deck more consistent, or you can add some of your own taste. These deck profiles are also for you to have fun with it. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is something that I've been having a lot of fun with. This deck is very good. It has the ability to play against the format very well, especially since it's primarily made up of mill and Shenron. And then we have all the other decks that are very strong in this format like Pan. This deck can compete with all of them. Now, the one thing I want to tell you guys is, is that it's very important for you to let me know what kind of topics you would like me to discuss on this channel so that we can have things that you want and you are interested in. That's very, very key for this place so that every time you come in and you see that I released a new video, you wanna be a part of it. Whether it's Dragon Ball related, Magic the Gathering, Naruto, whatever it is, it's something that you wanna be a part of, especially if we're talking about life related topics. And I will be having guests on this channel soon. So that's something that I want you to think about so you can gather up any type of ideas that you have and share it on here. Thank you for watching this video. And as always, this channel is all about you.